So where we left off was we were looking at an example of multiplication of matrices. So I gave you two matrices, A and B, and I had defined the way, formally defined the way to uh, multiply two matrices together. And I asked you if you could compute A, A times B without seeing an example first. If you didn't get far on that, that's okay. We're gonna do an example. We'll work out that example in complete detail here so you can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in all the gory details, but as time goes on, you can just do a lot of these steps in your head. Now, remember what I said is you take each row and you're pairing it with each column. So if, for example, I'm going to pair the first row with the first column. So I get one times one. Sorry, let me make sure everything's all set up here. I have one times one plus two times zero plus three times one. Then I do pair the first row with the second column. So I have one times zero plus two times one plus three times zero. Then I pair the first row with the last column. So one times one plus two times zero plus three times minus one. So that gives me the first row of my matrix. Now I'm going to repeat the second, uh, repeat this idea with the second row. So I take the second row and I pair it with each column. So I get four times one plus five times zero plus six times one. Then I get four times zero plus five times one plus six times zero. Then I have four times one, five times zero plus six times minus one. And now I have to simplify all of these expressions. And that's just straightforward arithmetic. So in this spot, I will end up with a four. In the second position, I'll have a two. In the third position, I'll have a minus two because I have a one minus three. Over here, I get four plus six, which is 10. Here, I'll end up with only a five. And in the last spot, I will end up with a minus two. Okay. Now, this just gives you one example of how to do this. And as you may expect, you can do this in Octave and the command is simply A times B. And just remember, in most computer algebra systems, multiplication is the star or the asterisk. And so let's make sure that this is correct. We'll go over to Octave. It went to sleep on me, so uh, let's just wake, her, wake it back up. So reconnect and see if I, the information is still stored. There is my matrix A, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then our, my matrix B, I've already inputted it before, before it went to sleep. There we go, there's my matrix B. And I can ask it, what is A times B? And I get four, two, negative two, 10, five, negative two. And if I go back over to my working it out by hand, I get the exact same answer. Okay, so I just double check. There we go, yep, we get the same answer in both. Okay, so, at first glance, you know, this matrix multiplication may seem new and, and maybe difficult, but I want to just give you an alternative point of view just to show that you actually know how to do this. Because if you were to ignore, let's go back to my hand, if you were to ignore these columns and just look at the matrix times this column, that is something you know how to do. A matrix times a vector and you would get 4, 10. Similarly, if you ignored the outside two columns, but just looked at this matrix times this column, you'll end up getting two, five. So that's just what I'm trying to capture here. If you think of the matrix B as being a series of column vectors, then A times B is simply the matrix that you're going to get where the first column is going to be the column that you get by multiplying the matrix A by the column vector B1. In the second spot, you'll get A times B2, all the way up to A times BP. So this ties back into what you've seen in chapter one about a matrix equation. Now, what, uh, the other thing that we saw in chapter one is that matrices and linear transformations are linked. So whenever you have a matrix, you have a linear transformation. And whenever you have a linear transformation, you have a matrix. So what, what is happening in terms of matrix multiplication? What's in its connection with linear transformations? So let's say that the A and B are two matrices that you can multiply together. So that means the number of columns of this matrix is equal to the number of rows of this matrix. 
Now, both of those matrices define linear transformations, right? A defines a matrix from Rn to Rm by multiplying by the matrix A, and B defines um, a linear transformation from Rp to Rn, where I, we multiply by the matrix B. So what is the matrix A times B defining? Well, it defines a linear transformation T sub AB that goes from RP to RN that has the following property, right? And it which is defined to be the composition of the two function. So which is defined by composing the two functions. Okay, so i.e. T A B X is the same thing as taking the matrix A, composing it with the function B. Okay, so uh, remember what this means is T A T B X. And so let me just kind of illustrate this with a picture. Okay, let's say that we have my three spaces, RP, RN, and RM. T, the matrix B, defines a map from here to here. The matrix A defines a map from this space RN to RM, so this is TA. And notice that a, a vector X is mapped over to TBX, which is then mapped over to TA tbx. And what we're doing when we're multiplying matrices together is we're defining a new function tabx, which works by a first multiplying by x, sorry, first multiplying x by b and then multiplying by a. So that's a, b, x. So we're composing the two functions. So you can go into this function first and then into this function. So that's kind of what's happening from the point of view of linear transformations. Now, kind of in the final part of this talk, uh, so we'll wrap up this se little segment with some of the properties of operations uh, of these operations, and we'll continue this into the last part of today's lecture. And I just want to kind of first summarize some of the properties of the transpose because they're quite easy to summarize. So the, the first property of the transpose is that if you take the transpose of the matrix and then you take its transpose again, what is that going to be equal to? Well, it's just going to be equal to the matrix itself that you started with. Well, how does the transpose interact with the sum operation? Well, it interacts in the following way. You can first add the two matrices together and then take the transpose, or you could take the transpose of the matrices and add them together. What about scalar multiplication? Well, you could first take your matrix, multiply it by your scalar C, and then take the transpose, or you could take the transpose of your matrix first and then multiply it by the scalar. And then how does the transpose interact with the matrix multiplication? Now, this is the one you have to pay attention to. This is equal to B transpose A transpose. Okay, so pay attention to this here that the order reverses. So in some ways, we've it's very similar to the operation of inverses, which we saw earlier, that the, uh, the inverse of a matrix, uh, oh, we haven't talked about that, but we will see that uh, when we get a little bit uh, further. Okay, uh, so we'll stop here, and then uh, we have one more part of this lecture where I'm gonna talk about some of the other uh, properties of matrix multiplication and sums and addition.